So we mentioned previously that the scientific method is heavily dependent on measurement and all of those measurements will have some level of uncertainty about them. So um, a good example of this is um, when we measure a patient's um, blood pressure. Blood pressure is a measurement that's highly uncertain. It depends upon how hydrated the person is, it depends upon what they've recently eaten or drank, um, it depends upon whether there's been any uh, recent activity, if the person is feeling any kind of like anxiety, it's highly uncertain. And for that reason, um, physicians will often ask patients to measure their blood pressure over a long period of time at home because the office measurement once every three months when you go to the doctor may not be that good. So it's important for people in technical fields to be able to express to one another the level of uncertainty associated with a measurement so you know how good that measurement is. So that's what this section is all about. So what is measurement? Well, measurement is the determination of the dimensions, capacity, quantity, or extent of something. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, the scientific method is really heavily reliant on measurements. Typical measurements that we make in chemistry and in other disciplines as well include things like temperature, volume, which is the measure of the amount of space that an object takes up, often applied to gases and liquids because those things are hard to weigh, uh, length or height, and the area of something which is um, a measure of the amount of surface area um, amount of surface that something has mass which is a measure of the amount of material that um, is contained in an object and very common in um, chemistry and other disciplines pressure which is force per unit area and we use a whole variety of different devices for measuring these things now some of um, these devices have what we call an analog scale on them. They have like markings on them, right? And uh, these are very, 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 very common. Most measurements that we make, um, we're gonna use devices that have an analog scale on them. But some measurements very commonly will use a digital scale. And we'll talk about the, you know, how we understand the uncertainty of these different types of devices as we go through. Obviously, the quality of a device that has a analog scale on it, how well you can measure something, is dependent upon how close those markings are to one another and also how well that device has been calibrated. So it's not just the number of markings, right? It's also how well it's been calibrated. So all measurements have at least two parts. There's a number Sometimes this is referred to as the magnitude, and that tells you how big your measurement is. So if you, yeah, you'll hear people um, throw those um, two terms around. You say, what's the number? What's the magnitude of that measurement? And then also every measurement requires units, and the units are a label that tells you what is being measured, right? And that's really important that we make our units very clear. There's been a lot of horrible errors that have occurred because people haven't labeled their measurements with the correct units. The type of accidents where people die that routinely occur because of um, measurements being mislabeled. Sometimes it's important to include other things in a measurement in order for it to make sense. And a good example of this would be including direction. So, um, you know, if you're trying to say to somebody, you know, how to, to give somebody instructions on how to get to your house, you can't just tell them to drive for 30 mile, at 30 miles per hour for one hour. You have to tell them that they need to drive, you know, for one hour at 30 miles per hour east, right? It doesn't make any sense unless you give a direction. And sometimes it's also very important that we make the variability in a measurement clear. So um, an example of doing this would be um, to use plus or minus notation. Um, so it says today's maximum temperature was 27.5 plus or minus whatever. So, you know, if you have a um, rating on a sleeping bag or something like that, it would be nice to know 
when that sleeping bag was like too warm to be comfortable and you know when it when it was like too flimsy that it would actually be deadly to use it under those conditions so this example of a temperature here today's maximum temperature was 27.5 plus or minus 0.2 tells you that it was somewhere between 27.3 and 27.7 you see the measurement was only good to you know within plus or minus 0.2 now there are some numbers um, that are not measurements but they kind of have the same quality as measurements in that they're, they're represented by a number followed by a unit and they're referred to as exact numbers and these are numbers that have no uncertainty associated with them and there are like two really big classes of these the first is like whole numbers of objects so you know there are exactly three pennies here there aren't four there aren't two there's no error there's no uncertainty associated with that number it is exactly three so that's a very you know common type of exact number where we have a whole number of objects if that number is reported incorrectly it is because someone made a mistake right okay the other type of exact number that is very common are unit definitions so there are exactly 12 inches in a foot or 10 millimeters in a centimeter because us humans made it that way right that's a just it just is that way and so that's important so there's no uncertainty associated with a unit definition now sometimes there can be a fraction which is exact and we want to make that clear so if i say one half foot i mean that it is exactly half a foot no uncertainty associated with it now if i meant that it was measured to be about half a foot i would write it as a decimal right so if i want to make it clear that something is known exactly one way i might do it is to write it as an as a simple fraction if it's not exact if it's a measurement right it's not exact and there is uncertainty about it I'm gonna write it as a regular decimal number so this is pretty uncommon though to see people do that so inexact numbers have some uncertainty associated with them and all measurements are inexact numbers so why do they have uncertainty well they have uncertainty for two reasons there's limitations of the observer and then limitations of the device being used to make the measurement. So if I look at this scale here, you can see it's in centimeters, which are units of length. And the spacing of the lines is pretty big. The spacing of the lines is 100 centimeters apart. So this is a really, you know, crude measuring device. It's a really bad measuring device. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to measure the width of a hair with this, right? Also, my eyes are only so good. So I think that this measurement is about 100, 200, 300, and it looks like it's, you know, 300 and a bit, right? So it's 300-ish, right? But as far as what that little bit is, who knows right and different people are going to have different opinions on that so there's uncertainty about that measurement so there are two sources of what we call statistical error and you should recognize that statistical error are not mistakes they're things that we can't do anything about and so uncertainty arises because of these statistical errors which are of two types there are human errors which means even though a person is well trained, even though a person is not making mistakes, um, even though you know the person is doing their very best, there's a certain limit to their dexterity and a certain limit to the quality of their eyes. You can only do so well. 
And then the other type of error is like instrument error, right? Even though the machine was made as well as we can make it, even though we tried to calibrate it as best as we can against standards, standards, we can only build things so well, right? So these things together lead to uncertainty in our measurements. So we have a rule. And we have a rule in science that says that whenever we make a measurement, we only get to guess one digit. So what that means is I'm only going to estimate one digit smaller than the smallest increment on my scale, which is kind of confusing to begin with. So this scale here, we mentioned it has spaces every 100. And so what that means is I get to guess a number in the tens. What I don't get to do is guess a number way out to say like the, what, what, what is that? That's the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the tens, to the one hundred thousandths. I can't guess that good, right? But being able to guess to the tens is reasonable. So we only get to go one digit smaller than the smallest spacing on the scale, and that's it. So this one here is 100, 200, 300, and I think 300 and a bit. So the, the question is, should I leave it at 300? Should I make it 310? Should I make it 320, 330, 340? I'm gonna go with 310, right? But I don't get to guess in the ones, right? I only get to pick between, is it 300? 310, 320, 330, and so forth, right? That's the best I can do because the spacing on the scale is in the hundreds, so I get to guess to the tens. So here are some examples here. This ruler here has spacing in the ones, so I get to guess to the point ones, right? So 2.5, I'm gonna guess 2.7. And that's it, that's all I get to guess. Now, this guy has spacing in the point ones. Point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine, one, you see? So because the spacing on the lines are in the point ones, I get to guess out to the point oh one. So I'm gonna read this as 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and a bit. So I'm going to go 2.71, right? And that's it. Now, if I wanted to go, if I wanted to decide that it was exactly on the 2.7 line, I would put 2.70 because I always guess my one, I always include one estimated number. Okay, so this guy has spacing in the tens, right? So I'm going to guess out to the ones. So... 20, 30, well, there's five. And yeah, I think it's halfway between the 25. And the, so I'm gonna guess 27, there we go. All right, now this one, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this guy has lines in the ones, which means I get to guess out to the point ones. So 25, six, seven, 27 and a bit, 27.1, there we go. All right, so you only get one guess. You only get to guess one number and that's it. When you measure a liquid in a cylinder, we should point out that we always measure from the bottom or the top of what we call the meniscus. So on a liquid in a tube will curve most commonly downwards, but sometimes upwards. And the most common one for curving upwards is mercury, which is often used in thermometers and also in devices for measuring pressure. Mercury, the meniscus curves upwards, but we always measure from the center of the meniscus, where the center of the meniscus touches the line, which means it's either the bottom of the curve or the top of the curve. So keep that in mind. We don't measure like there, 
all right we're always from the bottom of the min or from the middle basically all right and if it curves down that's going to be the bottom and if it curves up that's going to be the top and then um here we go this scale here has got spacings every ones so we're going to guess out to the point ones so 31 32 and then it's exactly on the line so I'm going to read that as 32.0 okay 32.0 when you read the scale you try and hold it up level to your eyes or otherwise you get that what they call parallax error so that's kind of the error that when you know like you're looking from the passenger seat at the speedometer on the car and it looks like it's more than what it really is that's because you're looking at it from an angle so you never want to be looking down or looking up on it because you're going to get the wrong value you get down to the same level or you lift the device up so it's level with your eyes all right so the uncertainty in the last recorded digit can be indicated with plus or minus notation so it's often written on the device it'll say plus or minus 0.2 and let's just say milliliters all right and then you can record that in your measurement and it's always going to be in this like last digit that you record so that can also help you decide what the last digit is going to be if i see this i need i know that i need to write my number to the point ones right when i see that plus or minus so when you see numbers like this 15 plus or minus 2 indicates your numbers somewhere between 15 minus 2 or 13 and 15 plus 2 which would be 17 right if i see 15.3 plus or minus 0.3 that means it's somewhere between 15.3 minus 3 which is 15 or 15.3 plus 3 which is 15.6 and so on right but the uncertainty is always in that last digit all right always in that last digit so that's why if we have something like 15 exactly we're going to put 15.0 plus or minus 0.2 so sometimes you include a zero to let it know how good to let the reader know how good the measuring device was because this is telling me that the spacing on the scale are every one you see that every one okay cool all right let's move on now if the uncertainty in the last digit that you write down is one you can omit this plus or minus notation and it's understood so 15 plus or minus one gram it's understood if you can just write 15 and everybody will know that it's plus or minus one in the last digit if i write 15.01 it's understood that that means 15.01 plus or minus 0.01 so it kind of saves a little, you know, um, it saves a little, you know, it saves finding this little plus or minus character on your keyboard or writing it out. So it, it's definitely like helpful to do that. The thing to be uh, mindful of is that if that uncertainty in that last digit isn't one, you do have to write out the whole thing, right? Okay, you have to write out the whole thing. And normally you just look on the device and it'll tell you what the uncertainty is. And if it's not, um, written on the device then you know it's plus or minus one in the last digit all right so that's it okay so let's have a look at a few here it says what should be the recorded uncertainty plus or minus 0 0.1 plus or minus 0 0.01 etc for measurements made with the following devices so if a ruler has lines every one centimeter then we're going to record to plus or minus 0.1 we're going to go one unit smaller if a measuring cylinder has intervals every 0.1 mil then we're going to record to the 0.01 milliliters if a measuring cup marks every 10 fluid ounces then we're going to go one unit smaller and we're going to record 
to every one fluid ounce. If a scale has intervals every 100 grams, we're going to go one unit smaller and we're going to record to within 10 grams. So this will be the uncertainty in each of those devices unless it's also unless it's marked as being something different. Okay. So we talked a little about uncertainty. We should also talk about two terms called accuracy and precision. And in science, these have really specific meanings. They are different from each other uh, These um, in meaning these two words. And they might be different from how you, you use these words in everyday life. So in science, accuracy means how close a measurement is or a series of measurements are to the true value. So if you have more than one measurement, accuracy is going to be talking about the average. So let's have a look at a series of measurements that have um, poor accuracy. So the true value here is the bullseye value, right? And these guys have low accuracy because they're all clustered off too high and to the right. So if we took the average of those, it would put it in the wrong, well off from the bullseye. The same with um, these guys here. If I take the average of these, I've got three that are kind of like low and to the left and one that's off there, it would probably average to be somewhere about there, right? Again, it's off the bullseye. Now, these guys here have really great accuracy. If you took the average there, you would be exactly in the middle. And these guys here also have really good accuracy. If you took the average of them, some are too low, some are too high, some are to the left, some are to the right. But if you average them out, you know, the error in that one would be cancelled by the error in that one, and the error in that one would be cancelled by the error in that one, and you'd actually be on target. So this one here has high accuracy. All right, so precision is only about a series of measurements. You can have a single measurement with low or high accuracy. Precision is talking about a group of measurements and what it's talking about in particular is how close a series of measurements are to each other. So uh, this guy here has great precision, but it's got lousy accuracy. This guy here has both good accuracy and also really good precision because they're all close to one another. This guy here has got terrible precision and also terrible accuracy. This guy has pretty decent accuracy, but mediocre. It's not great precision, right? So you get the idea. So these words have different meanings from each other, and they also might have different meanings from how you use them when you're just kind of talking to your friends or family. So what affects whether a, me a series of measurements have good accuracy and precision? Well, they depend upon these two things called systematic error and random error. And so systematic error is when all of your measurements are either too big or alternatively, they are all too small. So you know, you might have experienced this, you hop on the bathroom scales and it's like, it's always too big, right? It's always too big and you have to manually wind it back a few pounds in order to get the true value, right? That's classic systematic error. So how you get rid of systematic error is through calibration. You weigh things that you know the mass of and then you adjust your scale so it um, lines up with those standard samples, right? Or you measure the temperature of things that you know the temperature of, like boiling water. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So you stick your thermometer in, 100, in, in boiling water and then you can calibrate it to correct for any systematic error. Random error is when, you know, some measurements are too big, some measurements are too small. They're kind of just a little bit all over the place. There's basically like noise in the data, right? There's nothing systematic about how they're wrong. They're just kind of like, you know, a little all over the place. And really these are all related to, these are come from, you know, just the fact that humans are only so great at making measurements and you can only manufacture machines to be so good, right? They're basically, 
uncontrollable. And so how you get rid of um, random error is by taking a large number of measurements and averaging. And what you're hoping is that you have as many that are, are, that are too low as you do that are too high, and then those errors kind of cancel out, right? So if you take a whole bunch of them, if you take enough, you'll get as many that are too small as you do that are too big, and they'll all kind of cancel out. All right, so um, let's have a look at using these terms. So it says three manufacturers of printed circuit boards were asked to prepare circuit boards that had copper lines that were 1.500 micrometers wide. So that little symbol there is the Greek letter mu, which is an abbreviation for micro, okay? The results from measurements on samples of their work are shown below. So here you go, you've got manufacturer one, manufacturer two, manufacturer three, and they've all got numbers here that are about 1.5 micrometers wide. And probably what you notice immediately is that manufacturer number three has got some pretty decent systematic error. Right, they're all too big, aren't they? Right, they're all too big. But they're all like they're all exactly the same so they've got high precision all right they've got high precision or another way of saying that is that they've got small random error there's not a lot of like up and down all right when you look at manufacturer number two you see that they're just off on that very last digit by about, by at most 0.001. They're all within 0.001 of the desired value. So they've got really good accuracy, right? They've got really good accuracy, very small systematic error. In fact, there's not really um, systematic error here because you've got like two that are too big and one that's too small. So you've got a tiny little bit of um, random error um, in there but no real evidence of um, systematic error. Now, when you go to manufacturer number one, you can kind of see they're all too big, right? So they've got some systematic error going on, right? They're all too big, yeah? But it's not as bad as what it was for um, number three. And then, you know, there's also like variability within these guys. So, you know, the average is about 1.50, you know, 07. But then there's kind of like, you know, there's a there's variability there, right? You see that? So, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's not, it's not, they're definitely more variable than these guys, which just kind of differ in that last um, decimal point. So what one is least precise, that means has the biggest scatter. It's got to be these guys, right? It's got to be these ones here. So that's got to be number one. Yeah. Uh, which manufacturer was the most accurate? That means closest to the true value. Well, that's got to be number two. Yeah. Because they're like, bang. When you average that, you're going to get almost what you wanted. Which manufacturer was the most precise? That means has the least scatter. Well, that's got to be number three. And then this one here, which one has large systematic error, but little random error? Well, you could, mum, number one has systematic error and it has a little bit of random error. And then number three has very large systematic error and it hasn't like no random error at all. So at least none that can be detected. So I'd go with number three there as well. All right. So let's have a look at um, reading a measurement from an analog instrument, one of your Alex topics, one of your Alex objectives. So remember, we've got to estimate one um, digit um, smaller than the smaller spacing on the scale. So this guy here, can measure these are the big markings the numbered markings are um they are here's a six here and a seven they're in the ones right 
there and then these these intervals here what are they that's 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 1 so they're in the point they're in the point ones right because they're every point two they're in the point ones so we're going to go out to the point o ones right so we're going to record out to the point o ones so here we are we're just zooming in you can do that you can magnify it in alex so this is six point two four six that's point eight so it's 6.6 .6, and we have to guess the last one Six point six Wow Where is it? Oh, so it's gonna be it's over halfway so it's six point seven Oh, I'm gonna go 6.75. There we go. It's not quite ah, 6.73. There we go. There we go. And then it would need some um, units on it, wouldn't it? And the units are centimeters. There we go. Okay, so that's that guy. All right. So that concludes this section on measurement and uncertainty. Um, I think it's relatively straightforward. The Alex topics that you've been um, assigned. So um, take your time with that. If you have any difficulty, please just reach out to me. Okay, take care.